Hey everyone, if you're gearing up for a mobile developer interview, understanding Expo with React Native can really set you apart. It's a fantastic tool that simplifies the development process, letting you create apps for iOS and Android quickly from a single code base. Today, we're doing a professional mock interview featuring two robots discussing Expo with React Native. Let's get started. Can you explain what Expo is and why it benefits React Native development? Expo is a framework and platform that streamlines the process of building, deploying, and iterating applications for iOS, Android, and the web using React Native. It's beneficial because it manages the complexity of configuring and maintaining native code bases. With Expo, developers can focus more on writing JavaScript TypeScript code and less on the platform-specific setup. Good. How does Expo and React Native CLI differ in handling native modules? Expo provides a managed environment with a pre-configured set of native modules, simplifying the development process but limiting customization. Developers can only use the native modules that Expo supports unless they eject to a bare workflow. On the other hand, React Native CLI allows direct access to the native platform, enabling developers to add any native module as needed. This mainly benefits apps requiring native functionalities outside Expo's default environment. Excellent. Can you walk me through the process of setting up a new Expo project and tell me what the key files are in the project structure? Absolutely. To start a new Expo project, you first install the Expo CLI, which is a tool that helps manage your Expo projects. You can install it using NPM or Yarn. Once you have the CLI installed, you just run Expo init project name to create a new project. During the initialization, you can choose from different templates based on your needs, such as a blank project, tabs, or even with TypeScript. Once the project is created, some of the key files you'll find are firstapp.js or app.tsx. This is the main React component that serves as the app's entry point. Next, app.json. This file contains the metadata about your app. It's where you configure parts like your app's name, icon, and version. Finally, package.json. Here you manage your project's dependencies and scripts. OK, how do you run an Expo project on a physical device? Running an Expo project on a physical device is quite straightforward. Once you have your project set up, you simply start your project with Expo Start. This command starts the Expo development server and opens a web-based interface in your default web browser. On this interface, you'll see a QR code. You just need to install the Expo Go app on your mobile device from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Open Expo Go and scan the QR counter with your device's camera, and the app will load your project directly on your device. It's really convenient for testing on different devices. What are the implications of using Expo for continuous integration and deployment processes compared to React Native CLI? Expo streamlines continuous integration and deployment by providing tools like Expo Application Services, EAS, which automate the building and deployment processes across iOS and Android. This can significantly reduce the setup complexity for CI-CD pipelines. React Native CLI requires developers to manually configure CI-CD pipelines, which involves more steps and a deeper understanding of each platform's build system, such as Xcode for iOS and Gradle for Android. Well, what steps do you follow to add a new NPM package to an Expo project, and how do you ensure it's compatible with Expo? To add a new NPM package to an Expo project, you first need to make sure it's compatible with Expo, especially if you're working in a managed workflow. You can generally find this information in the package's documentation or by checking if the package requires any native linking. If it's compatible, you just run npm install package name or yarn add package name to install it. After installing, it's a good practice to check if the package works as expected by importing and using it in your app. If there are any issues, sometimes the expo forums or the package's issues page on GitHub can be helpful for troubleshooting. Explain how you would use environment variables in an Expo project. Using environment variables in an Expo project is great for managing configuration settings that shouldn't be hard-coded, like API keys. You can use a package like babel plugin inline.nv to manage these variables. 
First, you add the package to your project, then configure it in your babel.config.js to read from an end file. You create an end file in your project root and add your variables there, like API key equals your API key here. Then, in your application code, you can access these variables using process.env.api key. This setup keeps sensitive keys out of your source code and makes it easy to change settings without modifying your code base. How do Expo and React Native CLI manage application updates and delivery? Expo offers a feature called Over the Air, OTA, updates, which allows developers to publish updates directly to their users' devices without going through the App Store approval process. This can accelerate the update process considerably. In contrast, React Native CLI does not natively support OTA updates. Developers would need to integrate third-party services like Microsoft's Code Push to achieve similar functionality. How does Expo and React Native CLI compare in terms of initial project setup and scalability? Expo offers a more streamlined initial setup with less configuration required, making it ideal for rapid prototyping and development. It's also suitable for minor to medium-sized projects, but can face limitations as the project scales, especially if extensive custom native code is needed. React Native CLI, while requiring a more complex initial setup, provides greater flexibility and scalability for large-scale applications due to its direct access to native APIs and the ability to include any third-party or custom native modules. Cool. What are the limitations of the Expo when compared to React Native CLI? Expo, particularly in its managed workflow, offers a wide range of APIs and components that cover the most common use cases for mobile applications. However, because Expo aims to provide cross-platform compatibility and easy development experience, there are some native modules and functionalities that are not supported directly in the managed workflow. When these specific native capabilities are required, developers often need to eject to the bare workflow to use them directly or use custom development. Here are some examples of native functionalities and modules that you might need to use the bare workflow for or find limitations within the managed workflow. The first one is custom native UI components. If you need to integrate custom native UI components that are not supported by Expo, you will have to eject them. Examples include certain advanced animations, video players, or complex UI elements not covered by Expo's component library. Next, deep integration with third-party native SDKs. Certain third-party services, especially those that require extensive native code integration, like advanced payment SDKs, specific advertising platforms, or complex analytics tools, may not be fully supported in Expo's managed environment. The next one is background processes. Expo can limit the running of background tasks that require custom code or extensive execution time, such as audio playback, location tracking, or data synchronization when the app is not active. Expo does offer some background capabilities like fetching, notifications, and limited location services, but they may only cover some use cases. Next, advanced camera and video processing. While Expo provides APIs for basic camera functionality, more complex camera operations like barcode scanning, facial recognition, or advanced image processing might require additional native code that is not supported in the managed workflow. The next one is custom device sensors and usage. Accessing specific device sensors or functionalities that are not covered by Expo's APIs would require native code. Like thermal sensor data, custom hardware button interactions, or advanced motion sensors beyond the basic accelerometer and gyroscope. What are the differences in debugging capabilities between Expo and React Native CLI? Expo integrates closely with tools like React Native Debugger and provides a web-based developer tools interface, simplifying the debugging process for JavaScript code and styles. However, Expo offers limited capabilities in its managed workflow for debugging native code. React Native CLI, being closer to the native environment, allows developers to use native debugging tools such as Android Studio and Xcode. This is essential for debugging performance issues at the native level or when native modules are involved. How does Expo handle versioning and compatibility issues with updates in the managed workflow? Expo, 
uses a versioned approach to its SDKs to manage compatibility and ensure that projects remain stable as new features are introduced. When an SDK is released, it maintains compatibility with specific versions of underlying software, like React Native and Android iOS SDKs. Developers are encouraged to upgrade to newer SDK versions to access new features and improvements. Still, they must thoroughly test their applications to ensure these changes keep existing functionality intact. Expo typically supports each SDK release for about a year after its release, providing critical bug fixes and updates. Explain how you would use deep linking in an Expo application. What challenges might you face in implementing deep linking in Android and iOS? In an Expo application, implementing deep linking involves using the linking and Expo linking libraries to handle incoming URLs and navigate to the appropriate screen. You'd configure URL schemes in app.json for iOS and intent filters for Android to handle specific types of URLs. The challenges in implementing deep linking arise from managing different URL structures and ensuring they map correctly to parts of your application, which can be complex, especially if the URLs have many parameters or paths. Additionally, each platform, iOS and Android, has different configurations and behaviors for deep linking, which may require platform-specific code. Thoroughly testing deep linking on both platforms can also be time-consuming, especially considering the variations in how devices handle URLs when the app is not already open. Can you describe how to secure sensitive data in an Expo app, such as API keys and user credentials? To secure sensitive data in an Expo app, I recommend using the Secure Store API, which provides a way to encrypt and securely store small amounts of data directly on the device. It's also important to avoid storing sensitive data directly in your app's code or within your app's storage if it isn't encrypted. For more sensitive operations, like transactions, consider performing them on the server side and using secure, authenticated APIs to communicate between the app and your server. Another good practice is to implement environment variables with tools like Babel plugin inline.nv to inject variables during the build phase, keeping sensitive keys out of your version control system. Discuss how you would optimize performance in an Expo app that handles large amounts of data, such as a complex social media application. To optimize performance in an Expo app handling large amounts of data, Start by optimizing data handling strategies, such as using pagination or infinite scrolling to load data as needed, rather than fetching large datasets all at once. Consider caching data locally to reduce API calls. Managing state efficiently is crucial. Using libraries like Redux or Context API can help manage state and avoid unnecessary re-renders. Memoization can also be beneficial in reducing the performance cost of expensive function calls. Optimizing image handling is another key area. Using Expo's Image Picker and Image Manipulator to resize images before uploading them helps to conserve bandwidth and reduce load times. Additionally, implement lazy loading for components and screens with React's Suspense and Lazy to load only the necessary parts of the application as needed. Lastly, regularly profile and monitor app performance using tools like React Native's built-in profiler or third-party services to identify and address performance bottlenecks. Can you explain how the Expo File System API manages files locally and remotely, and what are the key methods and limitations developers should be aware of? The Expo File System API offers functionalities to read, write, and delete files locally on the device. It also supports downloading files from the internet and saving them locally, which is especially useful for things like caching images or documents. Key methods include download async for downloading files, read as string async for reading files as a string, and write as string async for writing text to a file. However, developers should be aware that storage limits are set by the device and operating system, and handling large files might require more complex error handling strategies to manage failures effectively. Describe how to integrate a third-party native module in an Expo-managed project without ejecting. What steps are involved? In an Expo-managed project, you can integrate a third-party native module without ejecting by using Expo config plugins. First, you would identify if the third-party module provides a config plugin 
or if there's one available from the community. After installing the plugin, you'll run Expo Prebuild to apply the changes to your native projects, followed by building your project with Expo Run Android or Expo Run iOS. It's a straightforward process, but be mindful of the availability and maintenance of config plugins. How would you handle offline capabilities and data persistence in an Expo app? Discuss strategies for local data storage and synchronization. For offline capabilities and data persistence, I typically use Expo SQLite for larger data storage needs or Secure Store for secure encrypted storage of sensitive data. To synchronize data, I would implement a mechanism that checks network availability and syncs local data with the server when possible. A good strategy includes using state management libraries to manage when data should be refreshed from the server. The challenge here is ensuring data consistency and managing conflicts, especially when the same data is modified offline by multiple users. What are the best practices for managing and updating an Expo app in production? How are updates handled and what potential pitfalls could arise? In production, managing and updating an Expo app efficiently involves using Expo's over-the-air OTA update capabilities. This allows you to push updates to users' devices seamlessly. It's crucial to test updates thoroughly in a staging environment to avoid disruptions and have a solid rollback strategy in case something goes wrong. You might also consider incremental rollouts through Expo's channel-based publishing to a subset of users first. One of the main pitfalls with OTA updates is the risk of introducing breaking changes that could disrupt the app's functionality, so careful management is essential. Discuss the implications of using Expo Go for testing during development. How does it affect the testing lifecycle, and what are its limitations? Using Expo Go for testing is incredibly convenient because it allows developers to load and test projects quickly without the hassle of creating and distributing APKs or IPAs. It supports hot and live reloading, enabling immediate feedback on changes. However, one limitation is that testing in Expo Go might not always reflect the behavior in a standalone app due to differences in the runtime environment. Also, if your app relies on custom native modules not supported by Expo, you can't test these functionalities in Expo Go, which could lead to surprises in production. Well, that's it then. As we wrap up, a huge thanks for your time and insights. If you enjoyed this interview, please like and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Looking forward to connecting again soon. Okay.